Okay guys, so I have got a continuation over what I was speaking about in my last video in regards to Gypsy Rose. Just going to point this one out, it might feel like we're on some sort of a ship with the with the mixture between the low lighting and the rain hitting outside. I've got the microphone pretty close to my face, so hopefully it will drown out some of this wind and rain. It's not looking too good outside, we've just been smothered with snow and now the snow's all being washed away by literal gales. In my last video I was addressing how I feel like Gypsy can be the victim, be abused and then also be the abuser. I don't think it is as hard line as a lot of her fans make it out to be. I also don't think it is, is as hard line as some of the people who are, are not in support of her make it out to be. I feel like there is a lot to discuss and a lot of psychological elements that go into Gypsy Rose and the whole entire thing that I'm not as hard line as I think some people would like me to be. And that's okay, you can share your own comments in the comment section down below. Moving away from that and the impact that this has now had on Gypsy, not just Gypsy, on Nick, who Gypsy had basically asked um, to murder her mum. He is in prison for life and Gypsy has just come out on parole. There's been implications on, on what even is going to be happening with him. We have had, you know, ex-cellmates, ex-best friends of Gypsies, um, such as Rachel Garlic, who has come out, um, who has been a massive support for Gypsy behind the scenes when she was in prison. She's now come out and she's saying that she, Gypsy's basically dropped her like a bag of crap. I felt like I've done nothing but support her and love her. Even whenever I was not feeling like things were fair to me. And the reason why this does tie in with the social media presence is because she came out so hard hitting and she has revealed quite a lot of different things that had she have had proper management, a proper PR management at the very beginning, they would have told her not to say all of the stuff about Nick and about um, just kind of talking more about the night of events, saying that she doesn't identify as a murderer, saying that, you know, he should be behind bars because he was the one who did it. And because in the internet is the way that it is, and I don't think she has quite realised this because, of course, she has been away for so long when social media has progressed into what it is now, she wouldn't have realised that there would be a hell of a lot of people who would go behind the scenes, who would go finding out information, additional information, court files, filings and at all of this she doesn't quite realize this and I this is the reason why I did make my last video kind of saying that this whole social media hype up has it probably probably is going to have extremely severe repercussions on what is going to be happening with Nick like I'm out now right mm -hmm. I'm I have a voice now um the hardest thing was to watch everyone tell my story and you know get it wrong and speculate and everything but now i'm i'm it's free i have a, i have it's my turn now before we get onto the nick thing i'm just going to briefly explain what we're going to be talking about straight after so we're going to be talking about someone called rachel garlic now i don't even i don't know if you guys are aware of this but there was a sort of dual account between rachel garlic and gypsy rose when uh when rachel was allowed out on parole she spent a lot of her time making, you know, support groups for Gypsy for having this TikTok um, and kind of this like social media presence where Rachel would announce all of this information about what was going to be having, happening with Gypsy. Just basically trying to make it so that when Gypsy comes out or even when she's still in prison, she had a good support system. Now, unfortunately, this took a bit of a turn for for the worse. In my own, in my own opinion, I think that Gypsy had always had big intentions to become, you know, a social media starlet. She she wanted that social media presence. This is all very alleged, but we're going to be getting into that in just a second. But we're just going to touch on what is happening with Nicholas. Now, whether or not Nicholas would have really have gone in, hitting the ground running, despite Gypsy not saying all of this additional stuff about him, who really knows? It says, Nicholas's attorneys had argued he had a diminished capacity because he has autism spectrum disorder and an IQ on the low side of average. And on December the 5th, he filed a new appeal over his conviction. Court TV reported January 3rd. 
The outlet said he is alleging that his counsel failed to act as a reasonably competent attorney under the same or similar circumstances by failing to fully investigate and present evidence from a qualified neuropsychologist specialising in autism spectrum disorder to support the diminished capacity defence. His public defender, Tyler Cole, stated that in Nicholas's last trial, he had argued that his mental state did not meet the requirements for first-degree murder. The jury should have only found him guilty of second degree murder. If he were to get a new trial then it would start over and there wouldn't be any previous finding of first degree or second degree. So this is ultra interesting. So this to me means that they could be going back and they could be arguing for second degree murder. Would this then mean that Gypsy would then have to go back? That there might be some sort of repercussions for Gypsy? I don't know. I'm not a legal head. I'm just reading what I read and watching what I watch and reporting it back to you. So Nick has actually tried to appeal his conviction twice. The very first time they tried arguing that he needed a psychologist, that there should have been like an evaluation or something. And the judge basically was like, no, like we, we don't need to offer you on to try and to try and turn the turn the conviction in your favor kind of thing and then the second time they tried appealing because of poor representation but i feel like yeah like i just so this would technically be what his like third time of that i know that he's tried appealing however this time there's much more of like there's a bit more evidence out there and gypsy is not really helping herself and this just is, yeah, coinciding with Gypsy's release. I did believe that Gypsy did manipulate Nick into doing the thing that she wanted him to do. There's also evidence of, you know, Nick saying that she was initially going to do it, but then she chickened out. Because the thing was, is that she wanted to do it herself, but she was too, uh, what's the word, uh, not, not cautious, it's, uh, I guess scared is just the word. I want to actually do it. Was that caused by extreme desperation from Gypsy? Do I think he got a fair trial? No, I feel like his mental state should have been way more looked into and it looks like now it may be. But like I just said, would it have been looked into? Would they be fighting this so hard if Gypsy had not come out, you know, hit the ground running? I don't know, because it looks like this was kind of put into motion before Gypsy was uh, put on parole. So who may who may we ever know? Who may we ever know? We may never know. Uh, I noticed that my ex-co-defendant, Gypsy Blanchard, got a lot of attention, as she did. And she just kept on getting more and more attention. I felt that it's been tipped in one side of a scale to where I really wasn't getting much coverage. I wasn't being able to actually be able to voice my opinion. I wasn't able to let everyone know what I truly feel. This whole court trial could actually be going ahead once again. And I think that's something that Gypsy really needs to take into account and something she should have taken into account if she wanted to save herself before she started saying all of this different stuff about Nick in interview. That's just my own opinion. We also have another really interesting thing. So I first learned this from this TikToker right here. I haven't watched all of her videos, so please don't come at me, but I have been following along with her sort of like tea spills uh, on this whole Gypsy Rose thing. They kept on appearing on my feed and now, now I'm hooked, now I can't stop watching this. They were sending donations, they were sending money. Now this is when Rachel told Gypsy she was done. Gypsy flipped on her and said, you're just mad that you can't post about me anymore. Now, Rachel was making money off of TikTok, but she was sending the money to Gypsy via JPay. And here's the receipts to prove it. The thing she said was that someone called Rachel Garlic uh, actually reached out to her and explained that upset by Gypsy's act. After they discussed the pros and the cons of having this page, Rachel began to post often. The purpose of this page was to help Gypsy build a following for her return home. Now, Rachel stopped posting on this TikTok page when Gypsy had her parole hearing. But at the same time, Gypsy had the docuseries and the book offer deal on the table. The reason why Rachel stopped posting is because Gypsy had asked her to stop and went on to say that the supporters and her fans really didn't matter. It was all about securing the bag when she came home. Now, both of them were 
cellmates. Both of them were together. They both spent a lot of time together in Rachel's own words, talking and they would take pictures and they would play various games. They really confided in each other and they kept in contact even when Rachel was allowed out on parole. I am so excited for her to get out and live her best life. Um, I hope to get to talk to her tomorrow though, but so excited. Everybody go to her page and um, give her the best of wishes. Now the way it works is that if you're on par if two people are on parole, you cannot have contact with each other um, if you're on parole. But the thing is, is that uh, Gypsy was still incarcerated and Rachel was out on parole. And they both agreed to create this sort of social media steam train where it was like a double account and Rachel would be posting updates. Whatever money that she'd be making from it, she was also sending it directly to Gypsy. Um, and this is a better explanation of that whole rundown with receipts, with screenshots and all of that. And here's the receipts to prove it. Now Rachel was sending Gypsy donations for her birthday and Christmas from her fans. And even one time Gypsy asked Rachel to ask her fans for donations for clothing in a private page that she created on Facebook. Now, I know a lot of people recently have been asking about parolees and felons being able to communicate with each other. Rachel was able to provide information on that, which helps make this sense, this situation make way more sense. Rachel said the prison knew that her and Gypsy were friends. She had got special permission from her parole officer to go visit Gypsy, as long as the prison allowed her to go see her. Now, the prison would not grant for Rachel to go see Gypsy. Now, Rachel did appeal it, but it was denied. And later on, she allowed her husband and her daughters to go see Gypsy in prison, which these are the pictures right here. Rachel has since come out and she said that she's been very upset and that she's actually going to be deleting um, all of the footage, Like, but at the minute, it's been taken off of their original page and it's now been made uh, onto her timeline. So she is gonna be deleting it, but you can still go onto her page and she, you can look at the playlist. I wanted everybody to know that I have released 71 videos that I had to uh, put under me only. Uh, now that Gypsy is out, I've released him, so she has a chance to see. Uh, everything that I did and for people that are new that don't realize how much support that I've been giving her or a whole story of us and why this is hurting so much um, I've released everything so if you want to check it out you can because eventually I'm gonna get into all of it so, uh, the way that Rachel was describing it made me think that as soon as Gypsy didn't really need her anymore, she kind of cast her away. Now, you can take that with what you will. Like I say, this is a one-sided uh, conversation. that We don't know about it from Gypsy's side. Gypsy probably will never address this because she probably doesn't think it's very important. When she called a couple months ago, we totally worked things out. She invited me to her party, and then two days later, she uninvited me. I don't know why, I don't know what I did, and I'm just in the dark as everybody else, but I'm praying and hoping that she gives us time because I feel like I've done nothing but support her and love her, even whenever I was not feeling like things were fair to me. But I can put all that aside because that's third party opinions and I think that's why this is happening. So, please stop asking me about her. And if you follow me just because of her, please just go follow her. I'd rather have my own followers, okay? Backing on from my last video, I do believe that Gypsy had a good intent, had real intentions of making it on social media and you know um trying to get a fan base and maybe she's not as shy to the public eye as she does say that she is now she has spent a bit of time kind of saying that you know it makes her uncomfortable and she doesn't like talking about things however she did have this account that was ongoing for quite a long time her friend rachel was sending her money from the money made and you know uh she was creating like support groups as it says right here i was 
found this actually i was sleep snooper snoop snooper sniffing i was super sleeping overall i found her reddit why am i such why am i such a stalker i found, found her reddit and um yeah she was saying that like she had like support groups that were set up and everything and you know it really did feel like rachel did think of her as a best friend and maybe that just was not reciprocated because gypsy's main aim was just to get you know money and to try and get enough support so that when she comes out she'll be able to you know live her life of being a social media influencer um well you know can't bring me down i'm on a high right now i'm living my best life and y'all can't take that from me and the d is fire inherently is there anything the matter with that now i do personally think unless you're going to be an advocate which i believe she's trying to now become an advocate for munchausen munchausen by proxy gosh darn it i can't say it just off the cuff um you get what i'm trying to say she is trying to delve into that a little bit more but once again i feel like this has coincided with the fact that she may now have a pr team allegedly whereas before when she was doing these interviews and she was talking about d is fire and all this kind of stuff i don't believe she had anyone social media trained fighting in her corner to make sure that she stays stum. i feel like this is the beginning of something really quite big in terms of would gypsy have to literally go back and testify in court would she have to go for another court trial if nick decides if it gets granted very much just all my own opinions but it's just been something that i've been thinking about if you can hear any noise and you have been hearing a noise it is my dog whining because i had to hide his chicken up on a top shelf because gosh darn it i can't record under these circumstances Okay, I'm gonna have to go get back to my dog and give him back his chicken because there's no way I can carry on like this. So from here on out, you're gonna hear some whining. So basically what I'm trying to get at is that had she have not been out and this sort of like, you know what I'm trying to say? then this would now not be a sequence of events. I do feel like with the whole ex-best friend thing, I do feel like there is a very high chance that she did manipulate this girl. Like Rachel's kids would literally call Gypsy Auntie Gypsy, like they were very close. And as soon as Gypsy didn't need anything from her anymore, snip snip, it was cut out. That's just my own personal feelings. Would this all come from years of psychological trauma at the hands of gypsy's mum yes 100 percent. which is the reason why this is all very like convoluted and the reason why a lot of people have a very 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 hard time listening to other people discuss gypsy's uh actions in a negative light her actions are unfortunately i think in my own opinion going to lead to a lot of trouble for her this year or next year that's just my own opinion of course. I do find this conversation extremely interesting because so much stuff has happened in the past two weeks that it feels like it's been about a year. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. That's it. That's it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch up with you guys in the next video.